Opening weekend's upon us. Kick off the season Friday against Colgate. Um, just want to get your thoughts heading to opening weekend. Yeah, it's um, it's hard to believe it's already here, but uh, it's exciting. That's for sure. We've had, you know, now this is our fifth week of practice, so I think our guys are chomping at the bit to uh, get going and play some real games. So. We're looking forward to uh, opening up against Colgate and Toscano this Friday night. Awesome. All right. We'll open up for questions. If you guys could just raise your hand, I'll get to you. Dan, we'll start you off. Do you have any uh, update on Sitar and whether uh, he's going to be able to play or if you know how long he might be out now? Not yet. No, we're still waiting on compliance. We're hopefully going to get uh, a clarification either today, hopefully today or tomorrow at some point. But I'm not sure, like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet that he'd be eligible this Friday, but we're hoping it'll be shortly after. Randy, we'll go over to you. Morning, Cav. How you doing? I'm great, Randy. You? Great. Can't wait for Friday. Okay. Um, you know, at media day, you mentioned that uh, you you feel your team's speed has improved this year. Who are some guys, you know, I should be on the lookout Friday night who could really motor and uh, call attention to? Yeah, I think, um, well, obviously there's some returning players in, in Percival and Tattle and Muldowney that, and Shandor that can, you know, really skate and get up and down the ice. But I think Ethan Gardula is a kid that skates really well, I think. Uh, Caden Shahan's a, a kid that skates really well. Kai Jan Baraya skates really well on the back end. Um, so th that, those are just a few there that I think will add to our overall team speed. As you go through, um, you know, the preseason getting ready for an opening night and you have somewhat limited time together, how do you uh, decide on lines and, and, do you recruit thinking for lines or does that develop uh, in these days leading up to the season when you see the chemistry on the ice? Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. You know, Hudson Shandor came in and he was a fourth line center, you know, but he eventually moves himself up to a first line center. So Chase Bradley played on our fourth line at one point and became a first line type player. So you like to see those kids that sometimes – what you might see Friday night might be very different come February or March, but uh, we've had, like I said, four weeks to kind of watch how kids play well, you know, what kids play well together, what might mesh. So we'll go off of that, but it's still, you know, as I've said many times, Randy, that we cannot replicate in practice. It's impossible. I've talked to a bunch of coaches in different sports in your preseason, you cannot replicate how our opponent's going to play. It's just a completely different level. So we'll find out more about our team, you know, come Friday night. And uh, one final question on a, a specific player. Murtaugh, uh, you know, lit up the BCHL, especially on yeah. the power play. Is he somebody that, um, you know, we, we might see on the power play? Uh, he's another kid that skates really well. Um, he's been hurt for – you know, he, he's back playing now, but he was hurt previous two weeks. So we got to kind of still assess, see where he's at. Uh, but he missed, a, you know, probably two weeks of training camp. But so okay. we'll see. All right. We will see Friday. Thanks. So. You got it. Thanks. Joe, we'll jump over to you. Thanks, Kyle. Morning, Coach. How are you? I'm great, Joe. Yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, Cav, in the five weeks, what's been the area that you've seen the most improvement in your team? Well, again, I'm, I'm hoping it's uh, in the offensive zone, Joe. It was an area where we struggled to score goals last year, and it's been an emphasis and a focal point of our preseason. And it's an area that uh, I'd like to see so – all that work we've put in in the preseason, pre I'd like to see that pay dividends come Friday night. What strengths in goal does Tyler bring to your team? Obviously familiar with him 
from New Hampshire, but um, what made him someone that you were actively pursuing in the portal? Well, one, he's an experienced hockey East goaltender. Like he's had experience playing in this league. So when he went into the portal, that was certainly attractive to us because we didn't have a goaltender with that. So that was something that was attractive. Uh, he was a very young goalie coming into college. Uh, you know, I, I still think his best hockey's in front of him. So those were two things that, you know, were appealing to us when he went into the transfer portal. And finally, for me this time around, um, when you go into an opening weekend, is it more about what you do than worried about what Colgate does? I mean, obviously they have a lot of guys back from last year, not their top score, not their number one goalie, but what's the, what's the mindset uh, when you approach this opening weekend? I think it's always, you know, whether it's the opening weekend or whether it's a Friday night in February, I think it's got to be more about what we do. And I think the best teams make the other teams uh, change their game plan as opposed to us trying to game plan for an opponent. So now there's always a few things they may do on the power play. Or they may run a face-off play that's uh, of note that we've got to make sure we prepare for. But by and large, I want us to be dictating the terms uh, of the hockey game, not us reacting to how they play. Thank you. Dan, we'll jump back to you. You mentioned how tough it is to replicate uh, playing an opponent um, until that first game. So uh, have you ever considered doing an exhibition this weekend or opening with an exhibition? Yes. You know, we got, you know, a lot of people got away from exhibitions uh, because of it, we were, we we're having to pay to play a Canadian team, you know, to bring them down here. And I don't know how much we got out of that, but now that they've changed the rule where we can play another college team, uh, yes, I would be open to that. We just unfortunately had locked these uh, weekends in before, you know, they changed the rule. So that's the short answer. But yeah, no, I, I'd love to play one. And I'd love to, like, I like using this weekend to get going. Uh, because it allows you to space out your schedule a little bit. If we didn't play games this weekend, our first half might be a little more condensed, uh, you know, where you're playing a lot of games, maybe a midweek game, which you try to avoid. I, was, I, would, I would hope that maybe they even change it so you could play your one exhibition game, you know, in September. That, that would be really beneficial for as far as I'm concerned. Then uh, there's uh, the change in the schedule where, I mean, it, it shifts it up one day, but do you like the ability to start on a Friday as opposed to a Saturday? Yeah, I do. It just keeps us more in line with how we, our normal week goes. And it also, like we had to go to Colgate last year, Saturday, Sunday, and you know, you get back late Sunday night, kids have school the next day. So it's certainly, and I, and I hate, competing with the NFL, you you know, we're, that's usually ne never, you're not going to win that battle on most Sundays. So I would definitely prefer to play Friday, Saturday night. What about some of the other rule changes, the uh, getting rid of the face off penalty and just kicking guys out of the circle again and uh, losing the, the, the double jeopardy penalty, where if you score uh, on the delayed penalty, you get to keep the power play. Um, I think there's some changes to the high stick rules. Anything that you really like or don't like in those changes? I like getting rid of the double jeopardy. I thought I never, ever liked that rule. I thought it could really change a game quickly. Um, so I think that's a good change. What was the first one you said? The uh, kicking guys out of the face-off circle again instead of the warning and the penalty. Yeah, I don't mind that either because real good face-off guys knew they had one freebie and they could cheat. And where it was supposed to speed the game up, I think it actually slowed it down because no one was ever dropping the puck on the first. Everybody was cheating. So that, I'm not so opposed to that either. Uh, the last one, uh, what was it? 
the, the high stick like yeah the, yeah that and that is a tricky one because i do agree with it like zidane Chara's high stick is different than brian giantas right um that being said i don't like it when it comes to a goal because it's very clear cut and dried around the goal it has been for years that it's the top of the crossbar and now we're going to get, you know, a, a six foot six player to a five foot six player. It's different. And, and I don't like that uh, because when it comes to a goal, I think it should just be the crossbar. But everywhere else in the ice, I do think it speeds up the game and it makes sense. With the, the face off change, are you working more with wingers or guys that maybe you wouldn't expect to be on the face off dot as much this season now that there's a higher probability that they're going to have to go in and take some face offs? So, we've always uh, tried to have two players on each line that can take a face off, primarily a lefty and a righty, because uh, I think it's much easier to win face offs on your backhand. So, I don't know if you've noticed that over the past few years but we've had usually two kids on a line and if it's in the left dot a lefty will take it and if it's in the right dot a righty will take it so uh you know if we have a line where we, we're definitely gonna have to have a winger that be able to take a draw or at least tie up on a draw but i've always tried to have two kids on a line be able to take a draw then in goal uh you know, just how has the competition gone throughout the the fall and how are you liking how the guys are playing coming into the first weekend? It's been great. Um, the one, the, that would be a great benefit of an exhibition game, Dan, because you could get all your goalies in for a period, you know, and give them, give them some game action. So again, it's it's really hard to, like I said, replicate what it's going to be like playing in a game. Uh, for those goaltenders so but I like the competition and you know I think we're going to be uh, I feel good about that position do you imagine it's going to look more like the last couple of years where uh, you've you've got a couple guys starting um, maybe even splitting the games or could you imagine where it's one guy really runs with it I'm not sure I just want one guy that helps us win games every single night. So whether that's two guys or whether that's one guy, I'll just let that play out. Do you know who you're going with on Friday? Not yet. You knew the answer to that question. <laughs> I know. Doesn't mean yeah. I didn't have to ask it. <laughs> we got anything else for, oh, go ahead, Randy. Yeah, uh, just one more. Um... You know, guys like Bradley and Capone were so heavy on the four check. Um, I know you got some size with Whitcomb. I mean, is is that something that we can still expect? You know, it's, you you've had a physical brand of play. I'd say the last few years. Um, are there any guys that are particularly you know good hitters and and heavy on the four check on this roster? Well, you know, just because you're heavy and you can deliver a bone crushing hit doesn't mean you're a great four checker. Um, not to say that they weren't. Um, what I'm, my point is, you know, Joey Muldowney and Jake Percival and uh, Tristan Frazier and, uh, you know, Ryan Tattle, they're as quick as anybody. They get on people and if it's a lot about stick detail, it's about getting in there quick and not giving the defenseman time to get his eyes up ice. So, there's a lot of different ways you can be effective on the four check without having to run somebody through the glass. So uh, I still think we're going to be a very effective four checking team. Thanks. All right, Joe, we'll wrap it up with you. Thanks. Uh, two questions, Cap. Number one, uh, losing Andrew Lucas, you lose a pretty good offensive defenseman. Um, who do you look to to kind of step up into that role? Can, can Tommy Mussinio take over that, that role? I think he has uh, certainly th those type of that ability to do it. But I also think Nick Carabin, who we brought in from Princeton, uh, you know, could possibly be running a power play. I think Kai Jan Varaya, uh, you know, very talented offensive freshman we brought in has the ability to run a power play. So 
I think, you know, we'll have enough uh, in-house here to, you know, try to replace Andrew, who is a terrific player for us. Are there freshmen, Cav, who you're looking at right now as potential red shirts, or is everybody in play? I think everybody's in play right now. I, I wish I had the luxury of football with 105 players, but uh, that's not the case. And how's your health? Not yours personally, because you look good, but uh, the team <laughs> health going into this weekend. Uh, our team health is, uh, well, Kevin Fitzgerald's going to be out for the year. He uh, unfortunately tore his ACL in practice last week, and we're going to have to get that operated on. But other than that, I think we're okay.